Take your Bibles. Revelation 5. I know we've been there a long time, but there's a lot of meat on that bone. As I've said, way back in 1990 when we started this study of the book of Revelation, that it would, to me, Revelation is like an index at the back of a big book. Okay? Like you have a big book full of information and you don't want to read the whole book to find something. So you go to the back and there's an index of key words, key subjects, tells you what page it's on. And to me, the book of Revelation is that because practically everything in here, everything that John saw from Revelation 1 all the way to the end is found in other places in the scriptures. And it gives you, under, when you go to these places in the scriptures, it gives you understanding. If we just read the Bible, keep reading it, even if you've read something already. Uh, several years ago, um, was going through some trials and God laid it on my heart and said, read the book of Proverbs. So I did. I read it all the way through and I went, that was good, now what? And God said, read it again. So I did. I went back and, I, and about the second and the third time through the book of Proverbs, I picked up on some things that God wanted me to see in there. There was two women in the book of Proverbs characterized. One is wisdom, which is the church, God's saints, the virtuous woman, and the other one is the strange woman, the harlot. And God tells you, draw near to the one, stay away from the other. And that's where your wisdom will come from. And I needed that. That was eye-opening to me. So, I looked one time, Revelation 5, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. It's one thing to say, yes, I believe that, and accept it. But then, my mind goes to, why? Why is it in God's right hand? Why is it sealed? Why does it have seven seals and not six and not five or 20 or one? Why is it this way? And when you ask God those questions, Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. When you ask God those questions, then God will answer it. He'll show you. So we, we have it simple now for us, whether you use a tablet or a laptop or your phone, or desktop or whatever, practically any app that you download with the King James Bible on it is going to give you the ability to search for words or phrases in the Bible. Uh, we are fortunate enough to, be, to have been blessed in our church and ministry with a lady that wrote software specifically for our ministry. And it's the King James Pure Bible Search software. She did it for free. And I was willing to pay somebody to do it. And the first quote I got, the guy said, well, we're looking at about 10 grand to start. And I went, that hurt. And God sent her to us. She said, this is what I do. This is who I am. I write code. And she wrote this amazing software. Bible Search, absolutely free of charge. And the great thing that I love about it the most is that people in places where you can't find a Bible are downloading it. We're smuggling Bibles. Amen? We are smuggling contraband into people's minds and hearts where they can't find the King James Bible and they're downloading and they're reading it. So you search for the word seal. Things that are sealed or things that have a seal on them. And God shows you why 
He has this book. What's the significance of a seal? There's three things that I'm going to share with you, and I probably I know for a fact I'm not going to get through all three today. First, seals are used and have been used all throughout history by governments or by kings or by anybody in authority to show authority or force of law or a treaty. So any time a treaty between the United States of America and any other nation is put into effect, you know, you can write a treaty all you want to, but it doesn't have force until that treaty has been signed and sealed by the people who have the right to sign and seal treaties. So if I, if I as an American citizen, signed a treaty with Cambodia, does the rest of the country have to fall in line with it? It has no force, right? I don't have the authority to have the seal. Now I'll give you a story out of the Bible. In the book of Esther, that the seal of King Ahasuerus is very important. Read the book of Esther and follow the ring. Because Haman first goes to King Ahasuerus and he says, I, I, you've got problems in your kingdom. You've got a group of people <clears throat> that are opposed to everything you do. They're going to start a rebellion. If our enemies come against us, they'll join with our enemies. And I'm, I'm going to get rid of them. And it was the Jews. And so King Ahasuerus, who didn't know better, he, thought he was being lied to, took his ring off, which had the official seal of the king, and gave it to Haman. Now who has the authority in the land where Esther lived? Who has the authority? Haman does. He's got the ring. Anything that he writes up and stamps with that ring is official and it has the force of law. Not even the king can override it. But then after the conspiracy is found out and Haman is discovered... Haman is killed on the gallows that were built for the Jews. He's hanged and all of his family hanged with him, all of his sons and everybody part of the conspiracy, they were all hanged. And the king took the ring and he gave it to Mordecai, who is a picture of Jesus Christ because Mordecai comes riding in on a white horse. He's a picture of Christ. That's that stupid bird that's trying to get in here. Yeah. Somebody bring a BB gun next Sunday, Brian. That'd be your job. So now watch this. In Esther, this is, this is in my notes. Esther 3. Then were the king's scribes called on the 13th day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants and to the king's governors that were over every province and to the rulers of the, every people of every province according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language. In the name of King Ahasuerus was it written and sealed with the king's ring. And the letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews. Sounds like Hitler, doesn't it? History repeats itself. Hitler instituted, at, first of all, he put in a law that confiscated all Jewish people's property. He seized their bank accounts, stole their money, forced them to wear the insignia of the Jewish people on their clothing whenever they went out in public. They were known to be Jews. And then a committee was held it's called the final solution on what to do with the Jews. And it was decided to build these concentration camps and have them gassed, have them deliberately taken by train and taken to these camps and gassed immediately as they got off the trains, killing over six million Jewish people. When the American forces finally made it into Germany, and they started breaking into these caves that Hitler had all over Germany where he was storing artwork and everything like that. They found boxes and boxes and boxes of gold teeth that were pried out of the mouths of dead Jews and they were stealing the gold out of their mouth. This was all done by Hitler's authority. 
And a paper trail, that's what the Nuremberg trial did. The paper trail led right up to the top. And you know the rest of the story. But they were to kill all the Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day. Even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. And that was put into law that that would happen. Okay? And history still repeats itself. So, now you kind of get an understanding. Here's God with a book in his right hand, and it's sealed. Who sealed that book? God sealed it, and it bears God's authority. That means that this book, it doesn't matter what, it, what any man says. Well, the Bible was written by men. Well, it, you know, it was written by this. You know, some people think that the Bible just floated down from heaven and God gave it to men. Well, God did exactly that. He put the words that he wanted those men to write down. He put the very words in their mind and in their heart and they wrote those down and those words were transmitted faithfully from heaven. Read Ezekiel. Ezekiel sees a book come down from heaven just like the book we see in God's right hand. Ezekiel's told to eat it. Then he's told to preach. Jeremiah, same thing. Isaiah, his lips are purged. He was given the words of God in his mouth to go and preach the words. The, the apostle John here in Revelation, it receives the little book out of the mighty angel's hand and says, you're going to go preach to all the nations. And all the nations now, all over the world, know something about Jesus Christ. He's coming back. Uh, es now in Esther 8, when the king finds out, Ahasuerus, about the conspiracy, he said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write ye also for the Jews, as it liketh you in the king's name, and... Seal it with the king's ring. You know what he just did? He handed them a blank check and said, make it out for whatever amount you want. Now, if somebody handed you a blank check, Brian, you did a house, okay, you taped the house, painted it, and the guy says, I've never seen work like this in my life. This is fantastic. This is exactly what I wanted. Take this check. Take it to your bank. Write it for any amount that you want. I would never work another day in my life. The guy told me that. Okay? But that's what he just did. He gave him the ring and said, you write up whatever law you see fit. To write up and seal it however you want to seal it it'll have my authority on it it's like I said it write you also for the Jews as it liketh you in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring for the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring may no man reverse and let me tell you something about this book it is irreversible it is unchangeable God is not going to change his mind about what he's going to do with sinners in this world somebody say amen if God and and anybody and I've had people say this to me well me and God we got our own deal worked out anybody that says that they're lying to themselves they have deceived themselves because God does not reverse what he has sealed so in Esther 8, verse 12 upon one day in all the provinces of a king Ahasuerus namely upon the 13th day of the 12th month which is the month Adar, the copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, and that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. And I believe, I'll tell you what I believe. I, don't, I know what the Bible says, that no man knoweth the day or the hour of the Lord's return, but the Father only. But I'll tell you what I believe. I believe it's written in this book because I don't think God is going to add anything else. In fact, I know for a fact he's not because in Revelation 22, he said, if any man adds to the words of the prophecies of this book, I will add unto him the plagues thereon. So at the end of book Revelation, 
the word of God is finished. It's completed. It's done. It's, there's nothing else to add. The contract is ready and it has God's seal on it, which means it has the force of God's law, which also means it has the force of God's law enforcement. The police in spite of what CNN tries to tell you, are not the enemies of the American people. I want to hear some amens. Are there bad cops? Yes. Are there bad preachers? Yes. But God favors law enforcement. He says in Romans 13 that they bear not the sword in vain. If we have laws as a nation, what good are those laws if they cannot be enforced? So we put speed limit signs up at schools saying that during school hours, speed limit is 25 miles an hour. What good does it do if nobody ever enforces, and there is no law enforcement, if nobody enforces that law, is everybody going to do 25 miles an hour through that school zone? No. <laughs> I remember Dave Weatherford, when we were in high school, got pulled over, and he was mad because he got pulled over because he was doing like 40 in front of Festus Elementary School, and the cop pulled him over, gave him a ticket. I remember hearing that story. That was, that was way back then. Yeah, he, it went downhill from there with him. Okay. But anyway, what good does it do if it doesn't have any enforcement? So God, when he seals something, like he has sealed this book, it has the force of law, and sometimes that force has to be enforced at the point of a sword. When Jesus is seen coming back in Revelation 19, what is coming out of his mouth? A sharp, two-edged sword. What is he going to do with that sword? He is going to enforce God's rule over this world. And he's going to do it right. Somebody say amen. In Daniel 6, a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet. That's a seal. And with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Think, think of this story. Think of it. They take Daniel. The, the law said that anybody who prays to any other god... Has, has to be cast into the den of lions. That was what the law said. So they caught Daniel praying. The king was forced by his own law, by his own force, to throw Daniel in the lion's den. He didn't want to do it, but he had to do it. And the, the Bible says that they put a stone over the mouth of that lion's den and probably used wax of some kind and used sealing wax and sealed that stone with the king's signet, with his seal. Do you remember what they did at the tomb of Jesus when they rolled the stone in place? What did they do? They put a seal on it, didn't they? <clears throat> so who has the power to override man's authority? God does. Mm. You see it now? It's sealed. Um, yeah, that's in my notes. I'm getting ahead of myself. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so the last heir shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch. Go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. They put some sort of Roman seal on that stone, um, I drove one night when I was in college. 
I was doing an internship in Texas, and to make to earn some money, I drove a postal truck overnight in Texas. Did you know that, Mom? Yeah. Uh, there was a guy in the church that had a contract. He had a bunch of box trucks, and he had a contract with the post office, and he had guys that delivered mail overnight between post offices. And so one night he gave me the job of driving this box truck two, three hours from Bryan, Texas to somewhere else, I don't remember where I went, and turn around and come back. And I watched them. They pulled the door down of the back of that truck and they crimped, that, they crimped the door with a little aluminum tag on there and sealed it. Why did they do that? What would keep me from opening that door and stealing? We had people coming by a couple weeks ago stealing mail out of our mailboxes. We found mail laying in the ditch. What? Payback. I don't think you should tell whatever story you've got in your mind. I don't think you ought to say it. No, I don't, but I don't want to know. Shh. Okay, I remember. Hush. It was a long time ago. I was foolish. Yeah. But anyway, that's what they did. And when I pulled into the post office, two hours, three hours away, backed the truck up, that's the first thing they looked at was to see that the seal was still there. They broke the seal, pulled the mail out, and I drove the truck back. But that's why you do it. And it has, to, and it has the force of the king's authority. Uh, let's see here. Watch this. Seals are used to show binding consent as in a contract. Your signature is your seal. Okay? Who signs... Who signs your name like you? Nobody. Handwriting experts are brought into court all the time to determine whether or not a signature is true or not. Somebody could say, yeah, that's my, sig that's my name on there, but I didn't sign that. They can claim that they didn't sign it. The judge can then order them to to write their name 10 times on a piece of paper. They could order them to do that because you can try to hide how you sign your name, but there's still going to be giveaways. And a guy who knows what, what he's looking for can detect it. So your signature is your seal. If you personally signed a contract, then you are bound by the terms of that contract but so is the other party to that contract. They also are bound. That's why we have contracts. That's why we do them. Because word of mouth gets forgotten very quickly, doesn't it? You said you were going to do this. I never said that. But that's not what I said. What I said was, and even I might not remember exactly what I said, and if I'm trying to cheat you, then I'm going to lie to you anyway. But if we put it in writing and then write it down, let me give you an example. These people that are so-called Latter-day Prophets, I've been around some of them in my life. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. They say that God is telling them all kinds of things that are going to happen. That they are prophets. I was asked by somebody years ago, does your church have a house prophet? And I said, yeah, it's the Bible. They said, no, no, no. There has to be somebody there in your church other than the pastor who God speaks to and he delivers prophecy to that church. And I said, no, sir, that is not how it works. 
The Bible is final authority. When I got saved, I agreed to the verses that was read to me. Romans 3.23, 6, Romans 6.23, Romans 10, 9 and 10, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, 1 John 1, 9, John 3, 16. I agreed that I was a sinner and that God agreed that if I would confess my sins, he would be faithful and just and forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. That's written in this contract. Somebody say amen. Now you've got somebody who comes along after you've agreed to this and wants to add words to it. Would you buy that, Sterling? Don't believe them. They're all over Facebook. They're all over YouTube. They're all over the Internet. Everybody's making prophecies. And let me tell you something about these people. They only have to be wrong once. And if they're wrong one time, and I promise you, God will make them be wrong one time to open your eyes. I went to see a man back when God first brought me into studying prophecy up in St. Louis. <clears throat> he was supposedly prophesying over all the towns that he went to. And I went and listened to him for three hours. And I wrote down practically everything he said. And when I got to my car, fixing to head home, I prayed. I said, God, this man, he's a preacher like me. I want to believe him. I don't want to think he's lying. But let God be true and every man a liar. If he's telling me the truth, I want you to show it to me in the Bible. If he's lying, I want to be able to see it in the Bible as well. Now that was 1998. So what's that been? 10, 20, 24 years ago. Not one thing that he said came to pass. Not one thing. After 24 years, I think he's had long enough. However, God is accurate enough to give us dates and times. When God told Noah that in seven days, I'm going to flood the earth, what happened seven days later? Did exactly that. So, a seal is used to show binding consent in a contract. Notary seal shows that parties to a contract have been legally identified. I was asked one time, and this is important. I did a funeral for a family that I didn't know at a funeral home in this area. I won't say which one. But they asked, uh, the funeral director called me and said, we need a preacher for a funeral. I said, okay. So I went, and th they introduced, the family introduced themselves to me. They showed me their dead mother who had passed on. I preached the funeral and went to the cemetery, buried her, and went about my way. A year later, I got a call from some mortgage company, a title company. And there must have been a dispute about her property or her house that was left behind. Apparently she didn't leave a will and they couldn't, I don't know what the problem was, but everything was being held up. You know, if you don't have a will, everything gets held up in courts and they have to. So this title company reached out to me and they said, we, we heard that you preached a funeral for such and such lady and they gave the name, and it was a name that I wouldn't forget. It was a weird name. And I went, yeah, I remember that. And they said, great, because we need, we need somebody to verify her identity so that we can settle whatever, whatever it was they were trying to settle. And the Holy Ghost was just going, Mike, think about it for a minute. Did you actually see that woman's driver's license that was in the casket? And I told the guy, I said, look, I'd like to help you out. I'm a, I like to help people out. I said, but you're asking me to 
to affix my name on a legal document that says that I know for a fact that this woman, her first name was Daptha. That's why I remembered it. Daptha. That this woman, I identified as it being her body that I put into the ground. And I said, I can't do that because the first time I ever met her was when she was in that casket. And I said, I did not know who she was before or now. I could not tell you 100% that that's who that was that I put in the ground. So you're asking me to sign a legal document that puts me in the responsibility of identifying this woman as being the right woman. I'm sorry, but you're barking up the wrong tree. I can't do it. Well, we, we thought we'd try. Go somewhere else. I don't know. I still don't know what the deal was they were trying to do, but somebody was trying to pull something and they wanted me to identify this lady and I couldn't do it. Bell rang, didn't it? You get no scriptures. But think about, think about the next time you sign something. When you write a check, if you don't sign it, what does the bank do with it? They kick it back. Why? Because you did not legally authorize the bank to release those funds. You have to sign it. Amen? Amen. I got, boy, I'm got to get done. Father, we love you. This book is great. Its words are right and true. There is no greater law book in the world than this Bible. Father, teach us good things from it. Teach us how to go about our lives. Teach us how to deal with people and understand people. Teach us why things are the way they are and have to be a certain way, Lord. Teach us and give us wisdom to live in the world that we live in, Father, so that we're not persuaded by those who would deceive us. Bless and honor your word. We love you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen.